Polymakers. So, um, this is one of my Mark III's. Uh, more specifically, it's the first Mark III I ever purchased. This is the one I did the live stream of. And not to toot my own horn, but it's still, till this day, the fastest Mark III live assembly done so far. Anyway, so, as you guys probably know, I love my Mark III's. I love my Mark II S's, I love my Mark III's. I have 10 of them in total. And for the most part, they're still original. Um, this one, in fact, still has the original parts that I assembled it with. Um, I, I Firmware is relatively outdated on this because I'm the kind of person that if it works, don't fix it. All of my Mark III's are still relatively stock. I have one Mark III, which is custom or, or modified. Basically, I just reprinted the parts in blue and stuck on a, an Olsen Ruby nozzle on it. And the main reason for that is they work perfectly fine as they are. To me, to someone who does customer prints, these are the only printers that I have um, that I just, you know, I press play and I walk away. I don't, I don't even have to look at the first layer because I trust them. They're reliable, they're repetitive, so I trust them. And therefore, I don't really see the need to upgrade them. However, um, this particular printer, um, the, the part cooling fan doesn't work. In fact, I have a replacement here which I just received from Prusa. And the reason why it doesn't work is because when I did the live build, uh, the live assembly of this, I lost the nylon cable that kind of puts, holds this thing in place here. And I put a PLA 2.75 millimeter um, filament inside. And what happened was that after some time, obviously that PLA got brittle, it snapped, cracks all the way through and started tearing the cable of the, um, of the part cooling fan. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take it completely apart and change it. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because LDO Motors sent me this. I spoke about this in one of my uh, in one of my vlogs. And this is the Bear Upgrade Kit, and it's an anodized red uh, aluminum, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm doing this once again, not because I'm I'm not considering this an upgrade, um, but you know we're makers. We want to make things, you know, ours. So this will be kind of like a three part series where I'm gonna be upgrading this Mark III. The first series will be, well, the first episode will be today where I take this printer apart and I'm gonna put the frame together. So just the basic frame. And the reason why it's gonna take an episode because I've been told that it takes quite a while to align the frame properly. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do. In the meantime, I've also printed a lot of parts like a lot and lot of parts. These were printed in um, Polymaker PC Max. I used the uh, Magigoo PC for this and it printed beautifully. These parts are insanely strong. Um, I had a bit of a competition at home trying to figure out who's gonna be able to break these parts, but no, no one won. So yeah, so I'm gonna be, it's gonna be a red and white kind of thing. And I'm gonna have the black screen which is uh, which I've just ordered and yeah it's going to be awesome. I'm also going to be using the LDO um, cool power stepper motor which runs about five or ten degrees cooler than the stock Prusa one. So yeah it's, it's time for me to take this apart and start assembling the frame. So here we go disassembly in three two one there you go it only took a few seconds but jokes apart <laughs> It only took about five, 10 minutes to actually disassemble it. It's much easier. Now, for those of you wondering why I still have the frame assembled, um, since I have four Mark IIs, I will be porting one Mark II onto the Mark III frame because I do find it obviously a bit more rigid. So there, I have a frame ready. Now, time to clear this up and start putting the bear kit frame uh, together. So all these up here are what you can expect in the full bear upgrade kit. These are the printed parts that I did on the Race Pro 2. And these are the gorgeous red extrusions. So this should do all the frame. You have the joining plate over here or joining plates. And you have all the, uh, the screws that you'll need in order to fully assemble the frame. So I'm going to start with the, uh, with the Y axis. So I'm going to need two by 331 millimeter V slots and one by 370, which should be this one over here. So we're going to start using these three first. I will also need four corner brackets. I need 12 and five by tens and I need 24 T nuts. 
We're going to grab the two 331 millimeter V slots. So two bolts there before I put that there. And Hi, it's me from the future. So before anything, before you start screwing things in place, grab your T-nuts and whichever you're going to use, just grab a screw and make sure that they're threaded properly. Um, and then you can use them um, because you might come across one that is not threaded properly and you'll see why very soon. To insert two T-nuts. And this will go on the outside, not on the inside, on the outside. Now for now, I don't want to tighten everything uh, because I will need to align this. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here. Two T-nuts there, and two here. Next, I'm gonna grab the 370 millimeter rail, um, standing upright, insert two T-nuts on each end and just screw them in place. It's important to know that the last hole here uh, remains empty for the time being. Just gonna tighten one screw so it doesn't get out of place. Next, you're gonna grab three T-nuts and insert them on each side of the uh, 331 millimeter rails or the V-slot rails. Once that's done, you'll need the other 370 millimeter V-slot. You will also need the shortest V-slot, which is 290 millimeters. We're gonna be using this as a guide to make sure that all these are aligned. Four M5 by 10 screws and eight T-nuts. And insert two T-nuts on the outer slots of each side. Now that that's done, all we need to do is grab the 370 millimeter V-slot and we just have to put it in place in there. And to do so, we're gonna insert two T-nuts on each side, turn this around. Once again, I'm not gonna tighten those fully just yet because I need to align this side as well. This is the part that might take a while. So the best way I feel you can do this is by Sitting it upright, make sure that the T-nuts don't fall out from the side. Sit the guide rail like that. And once it's sitting upright, you can push onto both sides and then just start tightening the screws. I'd say do one side first, so then it's much easier to grab onto the other side. Now what I can see is that it fits in there perfectly. It's definitely slightly tighter on this side than it is here. So I just need to, well, just play around with this and make sure it's perfectly aligned. So I can see that over here, I have a little bit of give. The only problem that I'm seeing, is if I can zoom in, is that over here, there is absolutely no gap. When you go into here, there's maybe like a half a millimeter gap wider than that. So I just have to align this. Okay, so the base is done. I have to say that took me about 20 minutes just to make sure it's perfectly aligned. There's no wobble anywhere, that they're perfectly square, 90 degrees, making sure that this is sort of perfect all the way through. Um, however that's done, I think that's probably going to be the hardest part of this build. Um, next is to put the feet. Now, ideally you'd probably want to print these in TPU and I'm gonna have to reprint these myself, uh, but for now these will do. We're gonna need four feet, four M5 by 12 screws, and eight T-nuts. I'm gonna insert the T-nut in the corners here, lining them. Okay. Next, you wanna insert two T-nuts here for the Y motor mount and the uh, power, uh, the PSU lower mount. And also two more on the opposite end for the Y idler. For the next part, we're gonna need four black angled corners, four T-nuts. That's four T-nuts, not four T-nuts, just saying. And four M5 by eight screws. 
and grab one of those tea nuts, put it in the corner over there. We're gonna put this right in the corner. And these will just secure everything in place, and make the frame a bit more rigid. After that's done, make sure you put it on a flat surface and make sure it doesn't wobble. So now that the base is done, it's time to do the Z-axis. For this, you will need the rest of the extrusions, the remaining six joining plates, 18 M5 by 10 screws, and 18 T-nuts. Now the side extrusions have tapped holes already, um, so those would be facing upwards. So the Z-axis would be like this. So what we can do here is grab two joining plates and just prepare them with the nuts and screws. Just gonna turn it around a couple of times just so they can just hold in place. Once those are prepared, three will go on the inside rail. So this way and two of them will go in the top slot, like that. What I would suggest now is just tighten one on each end just slightly so they stay in place until you do the other side. So once again, so first we want to make sure that they're aligned. So it's like a 90 degree now. This is flat, this is a flat surface. So that's flat on the, on the base. And I'm just going to hold down onto that. And with my thumb, I'm gonna push this so it's perfectly aligned with the, with the side of the V slot because these are machine cut, so they're perfectly straight. And I'm just gonna tighten a couple of them on each side. Still not too much. I'm not gonna fully tighten them just yet but just enough to hold the position. On this side, once again, forcing weight down. And with my forefinger here, I'm just gonna pull it backwards. What I want to do now is to make sure that this, as you can see, it's slightly higher from up here. So I just want to make sure that that is fixed. Once I know that there's no play, I can just go ahead and tighten those. Next, you're gonna grab the frame, put it on the side. We're gonna insert two T-nuts along each side. So there's two, four, six, and eight. And we're gonna attach these brackets here. Just two screws, the top two screws. And this has to be facing the same way that these brackets are placed. Don't tighten them all the way, of course, just enough for them to hold their position. Now that we have the Z-axis in place, we're gonna to have to attach it to the base and this Attaches well like this having the protruding parts Facing the back of the printer What we want to do now is align the three t-nuts that we had placed before Onto those holes without tightening them too much because we still have to calibrate the distance This is the point where I was talking about before in the beginning where some threaded um, Some some threads on the t-nuts might not be perfectly done. I had one there it ate away the threads of the uh, of the screw, so I cannot use that. However, it's not a big deal. Rather than taking apart the frame or half the frame to take it out and replace it, I'm just gonna leave it there for now and assemble the printer. Then I have some threading tools, which I can just thread in place and then everything will be fine. So now that the Z axis is, well, almost attached to the frame, um, we have to calculate the distance. Now this is where this tool comes in. This is 3D printed as well. And this has to go back here. It's exactly 106 millimeters, so it tells you the distance as to how far away the, um, the Z-axis has to be from the back, um, the back rail over here. So once you have the right distance in place, just push on the Z-axis downwards, just so it's 90 degrees because it's perfectly flat. And just tighten a couple of screws enough so it doesn't move. Then just jump over to the other side, repeat the same step, push it back so it's exactly flush with the tool. Tighten a couple of screws just so it stays in place. Once you've tightened each screw everywhere, what I would suggest is go through them plate by plate, unscrew them slightly, 
because you can see it's not aligned it just doesn't visually it's not that pleasing just align them and retighten them and that is the frame done um so a few pointers this took me okay it took me about an hour an hour and a half to do this the what the one biggest advice i can give you is take your time with this make sure everything's aligned make sure it's perfectly level straight check recheck triple check quadruple check make sure everything is perfectly level because ultimately it's a 3d printer um, and you need dimensional accuracy for this so just take your time but other than that it's relatively straightforward and it looks absolutely awesome uh, make sure you check their other colors out they have some really awesome colors so that's it for episode one of this series uh, episode two we'll put the extruder together i do have um a bontec extruder but i won't be using it for this build i also won't be using the mark 3 s extruder kit for this i will be using the uh the the original bear extruder for this so yeah that will be next episode following that we'll put the rest together and see how it goes that is it for today guys thank you very much for watching if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below make sure you like share subscribe and as always happy making guys